joined us along with Tyler Perry and Arthur Kaluma. Coach, can you get us started with some general comments about the game? Uh, yeah, about the game, uh, congratulations to Iowa State. They were the better team tonight. Um, there's a reason why they're ranked sixth in the country, and uh, we, we didn't uh, play particularly well, but it wasn't, it was because of them, and they, they made things happen. They were very aggressive, and uh, you know, they, they came ready to play. Um, but I was very proud of our guys because we kept fighting, and uh, you know, um, we, we were thankful uh, for this opportunity and blessed to be able to do what we do. And I, I love these dudes, and I'm excited about uh, you know next week and what God has in store for us. Okay, remember to raise your hand. Um, we'll get a wireless mic to you. Give us your name and your affiliation. Who you'd like the question to be addressed to? Rob Collins, Fox 4 here in Kansas City. Coach Tang, do you believe that you guys have done enough to get a bid in the tournament? Uh, yeah, I, I thought last night when we won that game against Kansas, and I have uh, several reasons why. You know, um, we have five quad one wins, all five of our quad one wins against the top 30 in the net. We have six wins against the top 40 in the net. The opponents that we played against in the non-conference and conference combined have the ninth best defense in the country and the 35th best offense in the country. So we didn't play a, a, a powder puff schedule. We have the number one strength of schedule of all the bubble teams right now. We have the number one strength of schedule of all of them. We're 1-0 against the SEC, and that was a true road game at LSU. Uh, we're 2-0 against the Big East, and we played Providence on a neutral court with Bryce Hopkins, right, their best team, and beat them, right? And so uh, we played uh, six power conference teams in the non-conference and an American team. So we didn't duck anybody in what we did. We won seven overtime games, and for some reason, that's being held against us in the net with the metrics, right? Because uh, I was told a long time ago, just win the game, right? And uh, because we didn't win by 30 or 40 against uh, quad four teams, right, uh, that's being held against us in the, in the numbers, right, in what the, what the net shows. Uh, what's not taken into account is that we were missing two guys who could have started for us. And we we're trying to figure out who we were in November when, when those things happened. Um, only three of our losses are to non-NCAA tournament teams. And so that, that's, that, that's another reason why I feel like we have nine wins in the number one league in the country. And so uh, I, I'd said all along, nine wins in this league should get you in. And so last night when we won, I, I felt really good about that. Now, obviously, I'm not the one making decision. But we have the most quad one wins and the best quad one winning percentage of any bubble team except for Texas A&M. And they have four quad one, quad four losses, right? So we have, we have no quad four losses. We have one quad three loss. And that was to Miami. And when we played Miami on a neutral site, they were ranked 15th in the country. They weren't the team that Miami is right now. Okay? And when we played USC on a neutral site, they were also top 20 in the country. We played the USC team that just beat Arizona uh, the other day. That's the USC team that we played, not the one that had injury problems and lost a bunch of games during the year. So, you know, I, when I look at it and uh, I see um, – our body of work, and I think about our quad one wins. We have elite quad one wins. Three, there were three teams are ranked in the top 10 in the country when we beat them. We beat Kansas full strength. We beat them with Kevin McCullough and uh, Hunter Dickerson, right? And we beat Baylor and we beat Iowa State. And so we have elite quad one wins. We have no bad losses. And so I felt last night when we won that game, they gave us our ninth Big 12 win that, that we were in the tournament. We're gonna go Thanks for asking that. We're going to go in the back to a television platform. Coach TJ Cleland, KWCH, Wichita. You're obviously pretty fired up about this topic. Over here, Coach. Obviously pretty fired up about this topic. You know, you've coached for a long time between Baylor and Kansas State. Just what is it about this group that makes it so important for you to, you know, kind of use this pedestal to, to do that? Just oh, man. You know, when you do go through all the things we went, this young fella could have went anywhere. He could have went anywhere, right? And they chose to come and be a part of our family and to trust us as a staff that we would pour and do everything we can into them to give them a chance to play in the best sporting event in the world, right, uh, in my opinion. And uh, it, it's, it, it's incumbent on me that I lay out the narrative the right way because I believe that some people fall 
for the wrong type of numbers and things like that. And if I don't, if I don't go to bat for them, then I'm not doing my job. And, uh, but I'm not just going to bat selling, you know, fairy dust. These, these are real, real live numbers right here, right? And, and I, I'm just telling you, in this league that we play in, there's, you win nine games in this league, you, you, you should play in the NCAA tournament. Got another question on the television platform in the back. Coach, you know, with all that being said, if y'all wind up on the first four out or the, or the next four out, is the NIT on the table for, for y'all still? Yeah, we, I mean, we're going we're gonna to talk about what, what's going on, but right now I got this crazy faith inside of me, and I'm looking forward to uh, Selection Sunday. Blake, can you, oh, Alexis, can you um, <laughs> take care of this gentleman over here? Uh, hey, Kellis Robinette with the Kansas City Star. Question for both players. You guys have typically fought back in games like that, even when you're down halftime, did it yesterday. What was hard about not being able to do that today? Why didn't you think it happened? Who would you like first? Give credit to Iowa State for playing harder than we did. Uh, they were the better team tonight. Simply, they play harder. They just play harder than us. Back on the television platform again. And let's go ahead and get this one right here. Again, Rob Collins, Fox 4, Tyler, for you. Well, what would it mean for you guys to get a chance to play one more game in the NCAA tournament? It would mean everything. Um, essentially, that's why I came to Kansas State, to be with a group of coaches and a group of guys like this. And um, it would mean the world, mean more than anything. I've said that from the jump. There's nothing individually that I wanted this year. But to share that experience with these with these with this group, and so uh, I think we've done enough to get in, and um, you know we'll wait on Selection Sunday. Let's go back to the television platform. PJ Green, Fox Four, KC. Um, just with that being said, uh, Coach Tang, we heard you not say you heard, we heard you say that y'all didn't play hard enough against Kansas, and then you, did, you you don't play hard enough again tonight. I mean, after that performance, I mean, what besides the metrics and everything, why why should they pick y'all to, to get into the tournament. Well, you know, we played a game last night against a really good team, right? And then we um, had to play a team that didn't play a game. And I don't know if you paid attention to the first two games of the session, but every team that played the night before lost by 20 plus, right? And so when I look at TCU, I don't think they're not an NCAA tournament team. Played the number one team in the country. And when I look at BYU, I don't think they're not an NCAA tournament team. They played the team that finished fourth in our league, right? And when we just played the sixth ranked team in the country, uh, and it was close at halftime, the other two games weren't close at halftime. So when I say we didn't play, they played harder than us. Okay, we're not gonna use, we were tired as an excuse. We're gonna say they played harder than us. We deserve it because what we did as a body of work, not to be judged on one game. And to be judged on this game after what we did last night, I think we get a check for that one. Okay, let's take a, a couple more questions. First one will be here on the second row. Kelly, uh, showing out with Kansas City Star again. Uh, Jerome, obviously, you can't, you know, go out and talk to the selection committee between now and Sunday outside of just talking here. But what do you, what do you do to fill the time? Is it going to be nervous over the next couple of days? Are you guys going to practice? I mean, how do you lead up into Sunday? <laughs> um, is it going to be nerve wracking? Yes, it is. You know, but I got, I told you, I got this crazy faith, man. And when we, when we come up short and we come up short a lot in a lot of areas of life, I got this big God that fills the gap for me. And I talk to these guys all the time about his grace and his mercy, right? And uh, so, so that's what I'm going to lie. I'll tell you, I got this really great feeling on the inside that this joy that's inside of me that uh, I, I can't explain it, right? And uh, you can't understand it unless you live it. Right, but there's, God's done some amazing things in my life for me, and all I want to do is see him. Uh, my prayer is that he delivers it for these guys because they deserve a chance to play in the tournament. So am I going to be ner nervous? Yes, I'm going to be nervous. Right? Are uh, we going to practice? Uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit with the staff and see what goes on. We know what we're going to do. We're going to be together. We're going to live life. We're going to love each other, and we're going to be fired up about the next thing that's in store for us. Okay, last two questions, uh, one here on the left and about the fourth row, and then we'll go to the back for our last question. Hey, Coach Tang, Pete Grad of Kansas City Star. When you compared the numbers of the bubble teams, which bracketology were you using 
for those teams? We, we went through the, the net and every team in every bracketology that's out there, we've, we've pulled them up and they, there's like, like 40 of them, right? And some are really good and some are not and some get hurt a lot and some don't and we just pull that. So everybody who's considered on the bubble uh, that would fall uh, even two above or two behind, we, we, we compared those numbers. Our last question will be in the back over here on the right. Jackson Schneider, KSL Radio. Coach, you talked a little bit earlier about you know getting to know this team with the, the curveballs that you were thrown early in the year. What did maybe you enjoy the most about getting to know this group, especially maybe the two guys sitting up there with you today and, and what you've learned about them over the course of the season? Yeah, you know, thank you for asking that question. Um, I challenged Arthur Kaluma. He asked me like, it was probably a week in a row, he kept saying, Coach, what do you need from me? This was early in the year. Coach, what do you need from me? Coach, Coach what, what do you need me to do? What do you need me to do? And I said, Arthur, I would like you to have your teammates fall in love with you. That's what I'd like. If you get your teammates to fall in love with you, we'll be as, as, as good as we need to be. And uh, he wasn't always easy to like. We'll all, right? right. He wasn't always easy to like. We, we loved it. But you know what? I saw a guy who made some some changes in how he interacted with people and how he went out of his way and, and just his maturity and, and how he took coaching and from his teammates and from his coaches and, and his teammates love him. Now he's done what I asked him to do, right? And, and, and TP, you know, he's like, he might be the second biggest flopper in our league, right? I, I'm being honest, the, the, the number one flopper plays for Iowa State, he's really good, Taman Lindsey, right? But this dude is, and I've been on his behind about not being a flopper, right? Like, like be tough, be, 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 be that guy. Don't, don't have the pouty faces and learn how to love your teammates and lead them and next right play and move on to the next thing. And I've watched that. I've watched the growth and you see these growth in these young men, not just as basketball players, but as men. Right, and that's, that's the thing I'm most proud of. I, I told them in the locker room, like, like, they may not have learned any basketball from us, but they learned about faith, and they learned about being men, and men who are going to be great husbands and great fathers, and, and I'm so proud of them, and I, I look forward to the next 40 years together, and, but I'm just telling you, I'm really excited about next week because I believe we're going to be in the NCAA tournament. All right, Coach. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks a lot. Go Cats.